morning. It's a beautiful day today, and I appreciate you being here. It's so glad, I'm so glad to see all of you. Uh, let's begin our service by following with the, the words on the screen or by turning in your hymnals to number 733. We're marching to Zion. our neighbors.
Let's continue our worship now with You Are My All in All. remain standing. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was a little late to say that one. Please remain standing as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. get that right okay it's very difficult to stand up here and sing when you've got the choir on this side and Dane on this side because I can't carry a tune hardly so that you guys sounded great okay so again good morning and welcome to Archdale United Methodist Church I'm so glad to see you here um, please take a moment to sign the attendance pads that are at the end of the pew if you are a first-time visitor please include your address and we will bring you a yummy goodie Okay, I'd like to go ahead and start with announcements, um, but before I do, I'd like to bring Al Henderson up, please. Uh, 
I was waiting to be last. Um, as you know, this time of year, it's a moving time in the Methodist Church. And um, Dana was appointed to us for two years. So Dana will be leaving. Um, and he gave me his official response here, so I'm going to read that for you. Uh, Dana and Joyce received their phone call from uh, Dr. Nancy Rankin late Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Dana has been appointed to the First United Methodist Church in Silva, North Carolina, as an interim minister for two years. Silva is in the county seat of Jackson. Uh, Jackson is the is the county seat of Jackson County, is seven miles from Cullaway. Uh, so any Western Carolina graduates, you know what we're talking about. Um, his church is the uh, Smoky Mountain District of our conference, formerly known as the Waynesville District. It is the uh, Nantahala National Forest. There are 619 members, and one-third of the members are lawyers, doctors, and professionals. Professors. I don't know how Dana's going to fit in there. <laughs> but he'll try. Uh, they have a community, a meal, a program against poverty, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, a group that uh, builds ramps for the elderly and three community Bible studies. Two worship services, a 9 a.m. contemporary in the Christian Life Center and 11 o'clock traditional in the sanctuary. And his wife, Joyce, has been appointed to Clyde Central United Methodist Church in Clyde, North Carolina, which is three miles from Lake Junaluska. She will also be pastor of, how do you say, Luisa? Luisa, UMC, and Clyde, a historic church started in 1793. So their churches are, um, <clears throat> her church is 24 miles from Silva. So they'll kind of still be close together. Uh, she's in Randleman now. So, all right, so with Dana leaving, um, we are going to be getting a new minister. And his name is Alan Van Meter. Thank you, Mike. Alan Van Meter. Um, he is in, um, right now, he's in, in Thomasville at Fairgrove United Methodist. So he will be joining us. I think his first sermon is July the 16th, I believe, okay? Um, he graduated from NC State. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Uh, in 1983, as a meteorologist, he was a meteorologist, um, and he felt the call. He went to Duke Divinity School. Um, he's been in the ministry since the mid-90s. Um, so he has two uh, children, uh, 24 and 22. His daughter is also a graduate of NC State. His son graduated from Pembroke. And um, um, I think his daughter works in Lexington. Uh, so anyways, um, it was kind of interesting talking with Alan on the phone uh, last week because, uh, you know, we had all that dreary weather. And I said, well, enjoy the rest of the day because I'm sick of this weather. That opened the door right there. And uh, so we started talking about the weather. And um, so uh, it's kind of, this is just a little bit of a side note here. Um, I told him my father-in-law, who, who's now no longer with us, Every time we'd go visit him, he was sitting in front of the TV. If he wasn't watching sports, he was watching the weather. That's what he did, okay? And he would watch channels in Raleigh and Durham and so forth. And he was always complaining about, well, some of these people are just weather reporters. They're not meteorologists, so they don't know what they're talking about. So Alan says, well, it's funny you say that because in order to be a meteorologist, you have to take one more class to become a meteorologist. He says, that's all it is. He said, I would hate to be, uh, you know, someone would say, okay, you took one class in civil engineering, now you can build a bridge, <laughs> okay? So he's got a great sense of humor and uh, he's looking forward to being here. Um, so um, that's all I have. Uh, Sorry, sorry, okay. Uh, Laura, his wife's name is Laura. Laura, okay. So, um, 
And that's all I know so far. And uh, if you have any questions, don't ask me. All right. <laughs> there's some other announcements I'd like to make. It is the fifth Sunday, which means that we will, after this service, meet in the fellowship hall. For, we always eat. We love to eat in this church, so we will be eating in the fellowship hall. Love to see you there. Uh, today at 4.30 is our family and friends movie day. Uh, they're going to be showing the movie in the fellowship hall, Miracles from Heaven. Concessions will be sold there, and this is to raise money for the youth mission trip. Again, that's at 4.30. Uh, graduate Sunday is June the 4th, so if you have a high school or college graduate, uh, we need to get their information into the office. Mother's Day is coming up, and you have the ability to recognize your mother or someone that you um, special like your mother in the, uh, I think there's an insert in the bulletin that you can complete. And there's still some barbecue and Brunswick stew left. If you're interested, contact the church office. Now it's time for our call to prayer. Or does anyone have any announcements I did not make? Trustees meeting right after this service. You're going to miss the food. Okay. <laughs> Bruce will talk real quick. Okay. Uh, now it's our call to prayer. So let's start with um, 405 in our United Methodist hymnal. Seek ye first the first verse and then close the prayer with the second verse of the same song. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this church where we can all come together to worship you. Bless all our members and all those in attendance today. Help us to open our hearts and open our minds to understand what purposes you have for us and to clearly hear any messages you want us to receive. We pray that you'll be with all those on our prayer list and with those that are silently suffering. We pray that you'll help us to strengthen our church and help strengthen us in our Christian faith. Help us, Lord, also to always remember the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. pray. Father, we thank you for all that you have given us and for all that you've provided and allowed us to enjoy. Please accept our offerings and let them be used to not only help build this church, but also in helping build your kingdom. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Build your house. 
on the solid rock. Build your house on the solid rock. When the floods rise and the rains come down, the house that is built on the rock will stand. Build your life on Jesus Christ. He is the rock, the solid rock. Build your house on the solid rock. Build your house on the solid rock. The house that is built on the rock will stand. Build your house on the solid rock. Build your house on the solid rock. Don't be like the foolish man. He built his house on the sinking sand. Build your life on Jesus Christ. He is the rock, the solid rock. The scripture for today is Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. 
Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That was an amazing anthem. Thank you. Um, just a personal word. If, if I'd had any vote or any choice in your new pastor, my first choice would have been Alan Van Meter. We went to Duke together 23 years ago, and he is an amazing uh, younger man than me, and y'all will enjoy him immensely. He's kind and thoughtful, very focused on his faith, uh, but because he's kind, you will be able to throw him under the bus as well. Um, and he's used to that, by the way, but he's just an amazing minister, pastor. Um, you will enjoy him uh, very much. So. But the question that I've been dealing with is where do we go from here? You often hear people talk about great things ahead, but you also hear people talk about the way things used to be. Sometimes we wear rose-colored glasses, as Paul said, because we want to pretend that we don't see something. Sometimes we wear blinders because we don't want to see the full picture. Sometimes people try to sell you something, such as a bill of goods, about the way things ought to be. This morning, I'm not wearing rose-colored glasses, and I'm not trying to sell you anything. But I believe that our church has a great future that you and I can't even begin to see on this day. So great that you can't even see much of what the future will bring for this church in this community. It's a rather audacious statement. I'm well aware of that. So I want you to understand why I believe it's so true. My reasons for all of this is taken from Matthew chapter 16, which we don't read very often, because it's a pivotal point in the Gospel of Matthew. I want to present three reasons for believing that our church has a great future. And my first reason for believing that our church has a great future is because God delights in using imperfect people. Always has, always will. When God builds a church, God always uses imperfect people. People we probably wouldn't have even chosen, if you know what I mean. But then God didn't ask for our permission either. The Apostle Peter was a weak person, though loud, in many ways. He had what we might call foot in mouth disease. Yeah, I know, you're thinking, yes, who else has that? Which pastor, maybe all pastors, we all have a little bit of that every now and then. Come to think of it, in my 45 years, I've known a lot of preachers that have had that disease, including this one. Peter was always saying the wrong thing at the right time, or 
even more often, he would always say the right thing at the wrong time. Know anybody like that? And yet God chose him to build the kingdom. Just as God chooses us to build the kingdom. The Bible teaches us that the church is built on a foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Paul wrote that in Ephesians 2, again, which we don't read very often. So you could read Ephesians 2 this afternoon because God chose to use Peter in his redeemed state, weak as he was, to build his church. That's what being redeemed by Christ will do for you. In the first 12 chapters of the book of Acts, the story of the establishment of the early church, Peter's name occurs more than 50 times. When God builds his church, he uses people whose lives are full of mistakes. Take a look at the person to the left of you. Take a look at the person to the right of you. Now look at me. Would you choose these people to build the kingdom of God? God did. When God redeemed you, he gave you spiritual gifts and called you into the ministry of the kingdom. You are a minister serving Jesus Christ in this church and in this community. But God only chooses imperfect people. Paul knew this better than anyone. He told his church in Corinth, but we have this treasure in jars of clay. Life is full of mistakes. Life is full of areas of weakness to show that all surpassing power is from God and not from us. In Paul's day, it was customary to hide treasures in clay jars which had little value or beauty in and of themselves so that they did not attract attention to themselves, those clay jars. The fact is God uses our weakness and our strengths, but often God chooses to use us at our greatest weakness points. We don't always pay attention to that. We might pay more attention to everybody else's weakness points, but we don't tend to pay attention to our weakness points. And the good news is that the Lord chooses to work in our weakness to show his glory and not ours. That's why I'm confident that our church has a great future. We don't have to depend on our strengths to build the church. We don't need a collection of superstars. We don't need the most bizarre, the rock stars. We need normal, broken down, imperfect people with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit because that's who God uses the most imperfect people of all to build the kingdom. Now the second reason that I'm confident that our church has a great future is this. Christ is building this church. Not me, not you. You and I are just along for the roller coaster of our life. When Jesus said that he will build the church, this is not simply a prediction and a promise, it is a declaration. 
It was the act in which Christ established the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. And Jesus will handle the building process. Jesus is ensuring its rise. God chooses to use us as instruments to build this church. But a word to the wise, Christ is building his church. Christ is building the challenges around us. The place where Jesus would choose for retreat for his disciples was a little too interesting if you read more about where they went because Jesus took his disciples to Gentile territory in the region of Caesarea Philippi and they were about 90 miles from Jerusalem in the northern part of Palestine and they walked all the way. He chose a place known for its pagan religions. He didn't choose in the basement of the, the, the temple. It had been a place of Baal worship. One scholar counted the results of 14 temples of Baal worship in the area of Caesarea Philippi, and that doesn't even count the Roman temples. There was a hill and a cavern that contained a spring, which was the legendary birthplace of the Greek god of nature. As you approach the city, you would have seen a glistening white temple, Caesar's temple. You would have been struck by the sight and you would have been ready to declare divinity to Rome. That's where Jesus took his disciples. What an odd place. It was under the shadow of the rival religions that Caesar's own temple that Jesus said, I will build my church. The third reason I'm confident that our church will be having a great future is that the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. The battle between the church and the evil one might look like it's pretty close from time to time, but listen, the winner has already been decided. The church will prevail. The victory has already been won. Whose team are you on? Christ is building a prevailing church, and he's inviting you to be a part of it. And what an exciting time to be here in this church in Archdale. I love this church. I'm so grateful that God has placed me here in this community and in this place and in this church at this time. How about you? Can you catch the spirit of what God is doing in this church? Have you gotten the glimpse yet? Did you think it was all about you? Nowhere in the Bible does it say you will understand what God is going to do in this church or in your life. Just grab on. Hold on for dear life. God has good news in store for you and our church. Some of it you won't even understand. Some of it you won't necessarily appreciate. Some of it you will question. Why are they doing this? Some of it you will not agree with. And neither will I. But God didn't promise that you would agree with the blessing he has for this church. We're called to be faithful. We're not called to agree with what God is doing. The good news is that God will bless us anyway. The good news is that God will bless our church anyway. So ready or not, here we come. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we ask that you continue in your plan, using us as instruments of your healing of the hope of Christ and the hospitality of the gospel message. We are here to serve you in whatever way that you have for us. Remind us, dear Lord, that we may not understand what you want us to do, but the doors will be open and we will do it. Give us strength. Take away our judgment of all the people that we know. Take away our feelings that we don't understand why some people are doing this, some people are doing that. Why are they doing this? Open the doors and open our heart that we might be a part of your plan for this church in this community and beyond. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 454. Let us stand and sing together. Bless this church in all ways. Bless this church and our meal today for fellowship and friendship and hospitality offered to all. And take this message and take our singing and invite others with the very words from our heart. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.